Issa Rae, this woman is doing her thing. She's admitted to there being tension between her and actress Lauren London. In the past, Issa said that a TV executive uh, who was interested in her show, Insecure, suggested that other women like Lauren London should play the lead role. Issa was not happy with their feedback, and that made Lauren uncomfortable. Issa said that Lauren's partner, the late Nipsey Hussle, got them to talk it out, and the women bonded over the issue. That's You know what? Everybody that I know that knows uh, Nipsey says nothing but amazing things about him and about how great of a soul this this man was. So kudos to him for, for, for making the type of him with Lauren London and Issa Rae. Uh, can you imagine Issa Rae? Uh, can you imagine, I'm sorry, Lauren playing Issa's role on Insecure? Absolutely think- not. Absolutely not. And, and yeah? I, I think that when it comes to this beef, I'm glad they squashed it, but Lauren really, I mean, Lauren really needed to go sit her ass down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Now I get it. The show blew up, and I think Lauren was looking at it like, "Dog, that could have been me." And she threw salt on my name, or she, you know, she blocked me from getting the role. But if you really take an introspective look at yourself, Lauren, you were not right for this part. And Lauren says that her and Issa sat down and they spoke for two hours. And that, you know, Lauren revealed that deep down inside, she truly is an awkward black girl. And that's fine and well, but I tell people all the time, the truth never matters. It's about perception. Lauren London, you give head cheerleader, most popular girl that all the, the, the athletes and the, and, the, and the quarterback is after. That's what you give. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's the truth or not about how you feel, you don't present as the awkward black girl. You're the pretty girl that's the head cheerleader that all the girls want to be like and all the athletes are chasing. That is what you give. You weren't right for the role. So it should have been. Go ahead. And I'll speak on this. I think this is amazing. This is a good thing to talk about. Like, I like to get away from the celebrities and just talk about the thing, the thing it's about. Like, the way you perceive yourself and how you think you're presenting to the world versus how people see you. Al, what do you think about this story? Um, I, I thought it was interesting because to me, it was like a play on colorism, if I'm not mistaken. Like they, the TV executives thought that a fair skinned woman should be playing in that role. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If I created the show and I, and I wrote the show like Issa Rae did, and I wanted to be the lead of the show, I'm going to cast myself as the lead of the show. I don't care if it's Lauren London or uh, Oprah Winfrey. I mean, that's just what it is, in my opinion. So that's kind of how I feel about this particular topic. I think this is more about Hollywood changing the narrative around leading women. And in the past, in order to sell in the box office, it always needed to be a light-skinned leading woman. Kudos to Issa Rae for being a dark-skinned writer, a dark-skinned producer, a dark-skinned leading woman, and doing an awesome job. Why is this still a thing, you guys? And this I was is off just script. About to ask why, 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 why is it still with with the? Okay, even if you're extremely disgustingly ignorant, the past year with the 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 uprisings, the protests, the George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter, the and people embracing their African roots after prior in prior years making fun of things, right? All things African, people finally embracing things proudly. Why is it still a thing? Are they not, they, they're still not reading the room that we want? Even light-skinned folks, like they're just like, uh, we still want to see black faces on our TVs. Why do they think that's the formula? I think this is old white Hollywood executives projecting. Mm. I think that they're speaking to their subconscious bias about the palatable black person. I don't think people of color give a damn. I have never been in the room around a Latin, a black or any other minority group where they've been like, I don't want to watch 227 because the lead <laughs> person is dark skinned or right. I don't want to go to this movie because that that black girl, uh, like I've never heard that before. It's never been a conversation. It's never been a thought. I don't know a one person in my sphere of influence who has not picked up a product or went and saw a movie or anything because of the color of the person's skin so i i don't know who this I, the, the only thing i can fathom that this is an issue to is white people hmm. 
The problem is white people making television, making decisions for black people without a black person on the board, on the panel, in the production, in the positions of power, and making these silly moves that we see clearly right through. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's silly, right? And that's why I commend people like Issa and Shonda for turning the industry on its head. You know, Shonda casting Viola Davis and Kerry Washington in, in, in like leading roles on like blockbuster series. Like mm -hmm. she did that. Um, what she's doing over there with Bridgerton and the, the Black Queen, what Issa did with the Love movie. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I think Issa's beautiful, but she's not the traditional beauty that we've come to see from Hollywood. And I love the fact that she's coming in with her awkward self, her non-traditional beauty and saying, people who look like me can be leading actresses as well. We can carry shows, dark skinned black people can do love comedies, romantic comedies. I love how they are just challenging Hollywood with all these old outdated antiquated as norms as well as challenging the black community. I can't wait, I was just about to say, I can't wait until we get a black supernatural movie, but we did, we love craft country. Um, so I love what's going on in Hollywood right now with people like Issa and, and we need more of it. And they tried it, like the, the disrespect, this woman created this, came up with a concept, started on YouTube and really built her show from the ground up. And a thing like skin tone is a thing you want to just like, well, we need a lighter person. This is, it's so dumb and so ridiculous. Al, you agree? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I just feel like it, it's a process, right? It, you saw how long it took not only America, but you know, internationally to accept the Black Lives Matter movement, right? This is years and years and years and years and years of content being created this way. So like when you're a trailblazer, like he said, I mean, it's just great to watch. It's, it's great to watch her change the narrative, to change the expectations and change the way Hollywood looks at all people of color, period. I look at someone like her, I'm like, who cares? I don't even know, like, her her skin tone is irrelevant. She's brilliant. She's funny. She's cute. She's adorable. She's likable, and she's talented. So knock it off with the bullshit. Anyways, before we go to break, real quick, we want to just touch on the story real quick. Brazilian singer MC Kevin fell to his death from a hotel balcony after allegedly trying to hide from his wife following a threesome with the model. Did y'all hear about this story? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so what do you think about this? Like he fell to his life, to his death, trying to avoid getting caught cheating. I think he took the lesser of two evils. I think he knew he was going to die either way. So, you know, for you, you got to be, you got to be mighty damn scared of your wife to think that you was going to turn into Spider-Man and jump out in them people's hotel room and fall to your damn death. Um, it's a cautionary tale to men out there. Uh, you shouldn't be going around cheating on your wives. And, you know, I just want to know, is she going to attend the film? The what? The film. The what? The film. Is she <laughs> going to attend it? You mean the, the prostitute that they hired? The, no, the, the wife. The huh? funeral. I want to know if the wife going to attend the film. Of course she's going to attend the funeral. You read her message. Uh, I thought I think that there's something more to this story than than what they're reporting. So I I actually did a little bit more research on this show. I mean on this particular show topic. So the deal is, it's this MC Kevin and his best friend Victor decided that they wanted to have a threesome with this model. Okay. Now allegedly they go back to her to a room that they rented to do the threesome, right? Which is on the fifth floor. He and his wife stayed on the 11th floor. So my question is, how did the wife even know that he was on the fifth floor? And also allegedly, uh, she knocked on the door. Like, why do you just open the door and say that the girl was with the guy, the other guy, Victor? Why would you try to jump off of the balcony to go to a lower balcony to sneak away? I don't, I don't understand. The whole story just reeks of something. It smell, I smell a rat and I'm not sure really what it is, but I think in the next couple of days, we're gonna, we're gonna really get to see what it's all about. Did the model have a dick? No, but what's interesting is they questioned the actual 
proposal of the three and what was the three, what did the threesome actually entail? Mm. Well, Darwin's law, everybody ain't meant to make it, I guess. <laughs> you know Arrival what? of the fittest. We're going to take a quick break before I get in any more trouble. We'll be back with more TGIF when we return. 